McCurdy, please tell us all about this transition that went from, uh, we already know how it went from Connery to Lazenby back to Connery. Please yep. tell us how we landed on Roger Moore. Oh my Lord. We got a little bit to talk about, gentlemen. So 1973's Live and Let Die marked the beginning of a new era in the Bond franchise, the era of Roger Moore, which is, he a is long a era. long era, very long compared to in reality, longer than Connery in some ways. Oh, okay, so we can't really start talking about the film, of course, without talking about Sir Roger Moore. Moore has been considered, was considered in the past for Dr. No and Honor Majesty's Secret Service. However, he was never approached for those films. It wasn't till this film that he was actually approached for. And then much like Eon had done, recruited from other television shows in the same genre, such as The Avengers, which we had talked about in uh, uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service and in... And, uh, Goldfinger. Moore had the leading role in the television show The Saint, uh, which was also part of that super spy zeitgeist in the 60s. He played the character of Simon Templar. And uh, you might know The Saint from the 90s movie with uh, uh, Val Kilmer. Uh, that was a that was a remake of that television show. Uh, so ironically, Moore had played Bond, James Bond, on a variety show in the 19, uh, 1964, but that performance was done for laughs. But I know you. Me, sir? Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> waiter! Bring me another waiter! Every performance of his Bond yeah. is done for laughs. <laughs> Plays for laughs a little bit. Let's be real. <laughs> he, uh, so he actually is two years older than Connery, but he did have to get a haircut and lose weight to play Bond for this role. Now, Guy Hamilton is still directing like he did the last film, and we had Tom Mankiewicz from the last film writing these films, and he continues writing for this next film. So he wrote Diamonds Are Forever. And he decides to make the ballsy choice after looking at the book selections of what they had still left to film uh, with everything that had been going on in the 70s with the Black Panther movement. Uh, they decided, let's do Live and Let Die, which was kind of a ballsy choice at the time. He had even approached Connery after he wrote the script because he had obviously talked to him in the previous film. And he's like, Connery, you know, it's this got alligators. It's got this car chase. It's got all this crazy stuff in it. Maybe you want to come back. Maybe you want to do another one. And uh, Connery's response is there are only two things in life. I'll have Charlie try to redo this. Uh, there are only two things in life uh, that I've ever wanted to own. A golf course and a bank. I own a golf course and I'm well on the way to the bank. I'm not coming back. <laughs> uh, okay, there isn't a single S cool. in that sentence, so I'm not going to say it. Well, f <laughs> Well, f Okay, It's anyway. not fun <laughs> unless there's an S. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So, okay, so during the location scouting for this a, film... I have a strip club <laughs> and a service station and a... <laughs> service station. And I, I like Snickers. I don't know. I can't think of any no, S's. No, it's fine. <laughs> so during the location scouting of this film, uh, producers and returning director Guy Hamilton found an alligator farm and with that sign that we see in the film that says, mm -hmm. trespassers will be eaten while they were in, I believe, Jamaica. And uh, they ran aground the guy, this guy named Ross Kananga, who owned the farm. It was an alligator farm. He had even Ross Kananga had even seen his father killed by alligators and crocodiles uh, growing but up. But he's not a doctor, right? No, no, no. He's just his name's Ross Kananga. Just so Ross Kananga. So they yeah. decided to incorporate the alligator farm, which is not in the books, uh, into the film. And they, of course, used Kananga's name as the villain from Mr. Big to Kananga. And then Kananga even performed the alligator jump that you see in the film where he's jumping over the alligator. That's Kananga head. doing That's that? That's Kananga mm -hmm. doing that. I thought they just had some generic no, that was, they were uh, like, stunt guy do it. They were like, Kananga, can you do this? He's like, well, sure, why not? I do it every time I get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, originally, the role of Solitaire was going to be played by a black woman. That was what uh, Mankiewicz wanted to do. Uh, however, and Diana, Diana Ross was considered for the role, but however, they went with what wow. was in the book and decided to cast Jane Seymour. Uh, fellas, you may recognize Jane Seymour in the 90s television show, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. That's the same. That is the same lady, just just older and very good mm -hmm. choice. Very good choice. Yafet Koto, who plays Kananga slash Mr. Big. And you may remember him in another film, Alien. 
He's the he's no. one of the crewmen in Alien. He's oh, in that movie. I thought he looked familiar, yeah. but I couldn't place him. I mean, you're only Never a couple years that. removed. Wow. And remember, you're only a couple years removed wow. from that movie. That movie came out in '79. This came out in '73. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's not that much older in that film. Uh, and then, uh, but he is even quoted. I don't have the exact quote, but he's even quoted saying he didn't really like the script, mainly because of a lot of the stereotypes that Man- Mankiewicz put. So he kind of had to find his own way to do the character because he didn't want to sound he didn't want to sound and i like think if anybody was was but i thought he's um, brilliant i i i really really enjoy kananga and mm-hmm. it's a tragedy yeah that he didn't they did they spent okay take there's like three major chases take one of those chases and remove it probably the mm-hmm. airplane chase and mm-hmm. give that yeah. time to kananga Kine- uh, yeah that would have been kananga right kananga 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 yeah. kananga, kananga. That would have been so much more worth our time because he is an intriguing and interesting and very intelligent bad guy. And then he's he's kind of wasted. You yeah. know, it's really unfortunate. Yeah. Let's switch gears from from intelligent to least intelligent character in this film, and that is Sheriff J.W. Pepper. Oh, never mind. <laughs> J.W. I think, I think Rosie is stupider than <laughs> oh, J.W. We'll Pepper. Oh, well, I she's pretty bad. Rosie. I hate Rosie. Yeah. I can't, yeah. Rosie is my least favorite character Up in this there. movie, but J.W. Pepper uh, yeah. was created. J.W. Pepper <laughs> is, he's kind of like Willard White. He's actually funny. Oh, yeah. And he's, he can be over the top and ridiculous, but he, he's a lot of fun. But that you character, mm. uh, played by Clifton James, was mainly created because, of course, Mankiewicz realized he's like, oh, f- like, all the bad guys in this movie are black and bonds the good guy he's gonna have to win so to try to like kind of not upset audiences not to be too per controversial he decided let's put a character in there that this is just some racist white guy basically that we to, can throw to in take there all that kind of take yeah. away from away bond. and just kind of you know <laughs> So then they're like, oh, this We need a racism sponge in this movie. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody gave a shit when Bond was judo chopping Asian people left and right. No. But when, <laughs> but, but, uh, this but is G-W America. Uh, but I think, and I think audiences <laughs> enjoy that character. Uh, he, I mean, he is, he's just stupid. Did Bob show no fix ass? I think his best line though, his, his most, like where they take him to his most ridiculous is the, we got all these. Black Russians. Yeah, black <laughs> Russians. We got a swamp full of black Russians driving boats to beat the dam down here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, uh, and then, of course, talking about other characters, there is one character that is not in the film. I've got your ticket to New York. Q has repaired your wristwatch. Q. Q's not in the movie. Q. Yeah. Q is not in the movie. Ah, yeah, this is, is the okay. first time Q yeah. is not in the movie, especially Desmond Llewellyn, uh, till much I later. I feel like I blinked and Bond had the watch, and I was yeah. like, okay. So yeah. they, oh. they originally, he was doing a television show at the time, and they scheduled time for him to have off, because literally he did, he would have done like, what, one scene? Um, hmm. So that would have been like a day's work, and then he would have gone back to doing whatever he was doing. But they, the producers were like, Salzman and Brockley were like, well, we don't want to make this too gadget heavy, so let's just not put him in there so we're less emphasis on it. Um, but he's not in the movie. It's one of the yeah. more gadget heavy movies, ironically. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's constant.